I'm a seventh generation farmer. My grandfather was the last person to farm here. Our farm, Smith Meadows, is right on the Virginia, West Virginia line uh, in the northern Shenandoah Valley. Where we're sitting right here is about 500 acres of pure pasture. We're doing farming practices that have been around for many hundreds of years using modern technology, uh, such as freezing, vacuum packing, and uh, taking it directly to customers. You know, it's, it's 2014 now. When I started, it was 1996, 1997. And farmers, like the world was not ready for Smith Meadows in 1996. Uh, the world had, wasn't ready for grass-fed meat, uh, meat CSA, it wasn't ready for farm-to-table restaurants. Uh, Whole Foods was like kind of like, like, what's that in 1996? So farmer's markets was this one little intersection between, uh, between farming and, uh, and foodies that kind of had like a track record. So that's where we started. And I just love the customer relationships at Farmer's Market, so I haven't stopped. I wake up hours before Farmer's Market starts and I drop off uh, meat, pasta, eggs, tents, tables, and then the folks show up, they set it all up and they sell. And then when I'm done, I pick it all up on the way home. Saturday afternoon, I flip it all over, I repack everything and restock, and then I go to some markets on Sunday. That's my job, like I show up and the customers rely on that and we're part of their habit. Uh, their shopping uh, routine, right? We're like a ritual for them. We feed hundreds and hundreds of families every weekend. That's part of the beauty and the, uh, and the challenge of this type of farming. It's definitely intended for uh, creative problem-solving people. And frankly, I mean, those are the kind of folks I want raising my food anyway. I'm just a participant. That ownership, while it's like legal and technical, that my family owns this place, it's, it's just temporary. We're just like here to take care of things. What a mandatory respectful relationship we have to have with the soil and the grass that comes from it. The grass is so forgiving. It's a completely renewable, sustainable resource. So that's really exciting. As a farmer, I get to uh, not use uh, diesel fuel, not use chemical fertilizers, not use sprays, herbicides, pesticides, all these things. And that's a pretty spiritual thing. Grass has this wonderful relationship where it's not a one-to-one -one ratio with what's above the ground and below the ground. It's a one-to-four, okay? So whatever you see on top of the ground, there's four times as much root mass underneath. That means we can have extra organic matter, we can hold extra soil, we can have extra desirable climate for our, our worms and, and soil uh, microorganisms, all these great things. So I say we're a grass farm because that's where our true sustainability comes from. And then what we do to uh, accentuate that is we put animals in a position to harvest that grass. If this sounds really academic, uh, we just need to keep in mind 99% of food is not raised this way. All the animals are raised outside year round, uh, chickens in the snow, uh, pigs in the rain, uh, cows in the heat. This is operating uh, humans with the animals with seasonality. If I didn't take five minutes every day uh, to enjoy this, then well, like, what, what would the point be? Farming is a lifetime of work. It's like that uh, Buddhist mantra of like a whole wood chop water. There's like, there's duty in that and there's a cognizance that that's work, but it's also an acceptance that that's, that's life. Um, if you don't find beauty in that, you're probably not gonna find beauty. So yeah, I find if I don't, if I don't take five or ten minutes and uh, and stop every day, then it just becomes a job. Who wants a job? <laughs>